Hi and welcome in this video. It's uh, Sylvain Favre from the Motion Designers community. I hope you're good. Today we are going to talk about tips and tricks inside Cinema 4D. First of all, you will learn everything about set edit set as default and I will show you what kind of objects are going to be modified. Then uh, we are going to talk about the static noise. In third, we will <laughs> and third, uh, we will uh, see how to manage the error textures. After that, we will create a Cinema 4D new, and I will show you what kind of object it's very useful to put in uh, in a Cinema 4D new. And we will finish with the, the limitation of sight. Let me introduce you to the new website of the community. It's mdcommunity.net and you have a tutorial tab where you will find some awesome English tutorials and a still frame explanation, etc. You have a contest tab. Uh, for the moment, there is only colored nature, but uh, you will have more contests in the future and you have some awesome prices. And you have a shop tab where you can, for example, find uh, the bundle of the French monkey and you will find some uh, reductions of, uh, of the products. You also have a Facebook group, uh, EN, EN Motion Designers Community, where you will be able to post your work. And don't forget to go on the Motion Designers um, Instagram. If you use the hashtag MDCommunity, uh, you maybe will be repost on this page. So let's start these tips and tricks. Okay, the first tip is edit set as default. This option is a very nice way to personalize your Cinema 4D. For example, here I have a basic plane. If I create a plane, I only have one polygon, okay? One in width segments, one in height segments. It's cause when I use Cinema 4D, I always modify those values. I put it one and one, and I did it every time. So it's very boring, but if you click on edit, then click on set as default and hit yes, the next time you will create a plan, you will have the same value and it's a very uh, it's a it's very awesome. Here I have a bunch uh, of objects. I will show you what kind of modification I uh, I did for them. To avoid wasting a lot of time, I also modify my cloner. By default, you have in py this value, and uh, it's very nice for beginner because when you put your object in the cloner, you see oh it's making something. But when you are working uh, with your cloner, you don't care about this value. So I prefer to have a px, py, pz in, uh, with a zero value and count to zero. Because sometimes you have very huge objects and uh, maybe your computer will crash if you have a, a value here. Okay, uh, maybe you want to uh, cache, uh, to check render instances. Uh, it's it's a nice option and maybe you want to start with uh, the mod object. Why not? I prefer to let it in linear like it and edit set as default. Nice. I also modify my cube because when I check the fillet, the fillet is very is too uh, too huge uh, for me. So I put five, three, and for me it's a nice fillet. I disable the fillet, edit set as default, yes. The next time I just have to check these options and I have a nice little fillet. Uh, I use uh, the surface uh, subdivision and uh, you have a difference between the subdivision editor, it's in the viewport, and the subdivision renderer. It's when you press this button or when you put an object on the surface of subdivision. Okay, here I will put zero, here six, I disable the fillet, and if I edit my uh, subdivision surface, you'll see the subdivision will use this value. I prefer to have two and two, 
because when you work, uh, when we are working on, on projects, uh, sometimes you use a lot of uh, subdivision surface and you forget to modify this value. And uh, the final render would be too, too long or too heavy for your computer. So 2, 2, it's very perfect. Edit, set as default. Yes, I use Octane Render, so uh, I need, uh, when I use a sphere, the render perfects will not work. So I need more segments to have a perfect rounded sphere. And I think uh, 72 is a very nice value for Octane and for the modelization. So it's nice. Maybe you can change the type to Exidron. It's a very nice topology too. I prefer the standard by default. Okay, edit and set as default. I use the incurvation to create a studio. So I put it in a plan. Okay, and uh, I need a strength at 90 degrees. Okay, here I only have to modify it. And in this case, okay, I need more polygons. Nice, and now I have my my studio, okay? And uh, I don't want to put uh, every time this value here, so uh, I guess 19 here, 90 here, and check this box is it nice. Edit set as default. Okay, next object is the effector uh, randomization. You use this effector, I use it uh, with my cloner. And by default, you have a position with uh, 50 uh, centimeters. I prefer to have zero, zero, zero. Check the scale and I mm, already um, always use it with a uniform scale, okay? And why not check the rotation? If the value is zero, it's the same but I don't have to check it every time. So I prefer to check it uh, in first. And um, it's perfect. So edit, set as default. And finally, you have the bevel. Uh, I put it on the cube. I will increase the number of segments. I put my bevel on my cube. Check it. Now you can see that the bevel uh, affects every, uh, every, every age. If you check use angle, the bevel will be smart and uh, it will work only on the bevel that you want. And you can play with this value. I really like 60 degrees. I prefer to have an offset to zero and subdivision to zero because I don't know what kind of object uh, I will have and sometimes it's a very huge obje object and sometimes it's a very little object. If the object is very little, one centimeter will be too strong, okay? Ah, it's working on my bevel too. If I tac tac tac. You see the value is not the same. If I put one centimeter, I have some artifacts. It's for that I put it to zero. And I really like to uncheck Fung uh, break rounding. Because when you use a simple shape like this cube, okay, I put some subdivision. When you hit render, you can see the Fung is breaking. Is a, you have an edge very disgusting here. And if you uncheck this box and hit render, you have something more smooth and uh, it's better. Sometimes you have to uh, check it, it's, it will be better because uh, you can have some uh, issues here. Uh, but uh, by default, I prefer to uncheck it. Okay, uh, now my bevel is perfect. So edit set as default. Nice. Um, I use uh, it, the edit setup uh, set as default on uh, some tags. For example, uh, if you use uh, the dynamic tab, okay, you have to modify some options if you want this ball to go in inside the ball. This ball in ball ball in the, inside the hemisphere. I will show it. 
if you want if you want your tag uh, working on 90% of the cases, you have to modify uh, those three options. Here, the issue is on my ball. So I click on uh, his tag and I will modify the shape. If I use more dynamic, okay, now it's working perfectly. Imagine now I use a cloner on this sphere and I put my tag on the cloner. It You will have the cloner on all my balls working like one object and it's not good. If you modify inherit tag to apply tag to children and individual element on all and shape as automatic mode dynamic, this tag will work on 90% of the cases. So to... Um, save uh, these settings, the edit set as default is not working uh, on my computer. It worked uh, two years ago and, and not today, so uh, there is another way to, to do it. You click on the tag, right click on it, and you have a save tag preset. You click it, you set, you, you put a name, you hit OK, and in file, load tag preset, you will find your uh, default um, your tags. Okay, uh, nice. Here I have a setup of uh, dead leaves simulation. And a okay, and I want to save it because uh, sometimes uh, on my project I want to use this preset. So you can click on the null where you have your preset and go in file and you can save object preset and after when you go in load object preset user object and you have your dead leaves here and you can load your dead leaves project very quickly there is other ways uh, other way to load an object you can go in file and use merge and uh, you can go the cinema 4d where you only have your dead leaves simulation you can also use uh, shift c uh, x ref okay and you can put the reference here it's the same as merge but you can uh, you'll be able to use a proxy to to modify uh, the other project and it will be update in real time uh, on this project so it's quite nice uh, <clears throat> okay, and uh, last one is the um, uh, static noise. Here I have an example with uh, the static noise and without the static noise. Uh, it's not a huge scene, but it, when you have a huge scene, the noise is very strong and awful. And uh, it's more easier for for you or for me uh, to understand what is going on on my scene when I use the static noise on my pre-visualization but for the final render I suggest you to, to don't use the static noise okay because it will be more easier to for your denoiser to kill this noise I will show you how to create it uh, to check this box and for me it's useful for the pre-visualization only Okay, you have to click on the edit render settings and you have an options tab. And here you have identical noise distribution and check it for the pre-visualization. Nice. Okay, I just downloaded this city on a CG Trader. It's a free project and you have some textures, but the link to the textures is broken. So when I, I don't care, okay, because uh, I want to create, uh, for example, a black and white um, video. And when I hit uh, render, you have uh, an issue here, an error. So uh, you don't care about it. You don't want to delete uh, the, the textures, etc. You only want this panel to disappear. So go in uh, edit render settings and in options tab, you have show textures errors. You unchecked this box and every time you will launch a render, it will start normally. Uh, one time, 
One day I launched a big render before going to sleep and I did not see the error message. And the next day the computer had calculated nothing. <laughs> Mm, cinema for the new, what is it? When I hit Ctrl N, when my mouse is on the perspective view, I will create a new uh, project. But my project is not empty. Every time I will launch Cinema 4D, I will have my Octane camera and my light setup. It's something I created and I save this project on uh, the folder Cinema 4D. So you hit Ctrl Shift S and you just have to go where you installed Cinema 4D. Okay, and you save it with the name new. And every time you will launch Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D will launch this new project. But by default, it's an untitled project. And uh, if you hit Control S for the first time, it will, um, it will ask you where you want to save this project, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I suggest you to create, if you use Octane, for example, uh, to create a Octane camera with uh, the tag. And I really like to use a response, a linear response. And uh, I need to have a highlight compression, exposure, etc. So I set up everything here. In my light setup, I show you with Sphere, Octane Live Viewer. Nice, and you can see my uh, my sphere is perfect, and I don't have to modify the number of segments. Here I have nice HDRI. If I disable the sunlight, it's different. Okay, and I set up a bunch of different mood for the lighting. For example in the night, etc. So it's very useful when I, I just want to test my geometry when I am uh, uh, when I modelize something or when I just want to, to test the mood, what is working. It's very quick and uh, for uh, realistic projects uh, this kind of HDRI and sunlight is very uh, very helpful. You can active the post-processing to have a, a nice blur on the on the sunlight, for example. <clears throat> I also modified the kernel. So if you click on settings here, uh, you will have some uh, numbers. Okay, I set up everything uh, here: caustic blur, past and power, parallel samples, etc. And uh, if you want to modify the render settings, here uh, you can modify it. As you can see, by default, the renderer is Octane Render and not standard and not physical, but uh, you can choose what you want. For example, I really like to start a project with a physical render in, in uh, the progressive mode. And here in Quick Preview, I never want it and uh, it's uh, it's a nice way to, to start. Why not have uh, f some uh, multipasses like uh, the illumination, uh, the depth, okay, uh, if you want to check it. And uh, why not uh, set up a format? You can do um, everything you want, it's uh, very useful. If you change the versions of Octane, you have to rebuild your Cinema 4D new. For example, when I use my uh, startup user, I have uh, my live viewer. And before I used uh, the version 3 and now the version 4. And I install uh, Octane 4 on my computer, but in my uh, preset, and uh, in my uh, Cinema 4D new, uh, use the Octane number three. And when I load my live viewer, it's uh, version three, but I don't have Octane three on my computer. So you will have some issues and uh, crash on your computer. So you have to rebuild your setup and uh, your uh, um, 
Cinema 4D new if you have uh, the tag uh, or Octane objects. Let's go for the final tips. And um, here I have a very simple scene. Here you have a solid a platonician, a plane. And if I hit render, you will see the magic. Wow. There is mountains in the foreground, but I can see it on my uh, previous visualization. It's very simple. If you hit Ctrl D, you will have the view clipping. And if I go on huge, you will be able to see uh, the mountain. But if I go come close to my uh, solid, the clipping will appear very quickly. So it's very difficult to um, make some little model modelization. So I need to modify this uh, value for something like small. And now I can go very, very close to my object. It will not affect uh, the render, the final render, okay? It's for that uh, when I hit render, I see everything. Uh, you have this little triangle, so uh, you can modify by yourself the, the value of near and far. You can increase that value. And now you have a, a teeny and a huge, it, okay? Teeny here, huge here, nice. Uh, you have some uh, artifacts, it's, it's just in the viewport. It's not important for the final render, but of course it's more difficult for your computer to manage a very huge scene uh, like that. If you prefer to use a large a custom um, a standard uh, options, you can drag and drop these options on the screen and you'll be able to modify it very quickly. So, okay, now I want to manage the mountain, tag, huge, mm, nice. And now I want to modelize, modelize my, uh, my solid. Bam, wow, it's so awesome, nice. Uh, you can do the same for every options and for example, a K interpolation when I animate, I really like to use uh, these options because sometimes I need them like spline, sometimes in linear mode. And you just have to right click on it and hit remove. Mm. And perfect. That's all for today. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. And I hope to see you soon on the Facebook groups. See you. Ciao.